<laughs> Good. So uh, that's the both, and uh, again, we'll not be able to introduce the feature because we have only 27 minutes. Uh, so um, let's start. Um, so uh, we'll be talking about the current, the first slide is a current summary of the support, and then we are proposing some extensions, and also there's some open issues that will be discussed by Simon, and I'm not sure we'll get to the last topic, which is uh, how do, if and how to apply the same model for container networking. Uh, so what, where we are today, uh, in 4.8, the, the basic mode, the basic new stuff got in, um, where you can say that you want to work in this mode. Uh, this is a devlin command. And then there was a MLX5 implementation for the representers and, uh, and some basic offloading. And then till 4.12, we uh, kind of extended that. We supported more actions like offloading of VLAN, push and pop. Uh, we introduced the tunnel key, tunnel key set. Uh, it's a TC, TC actions that allows to implement uh, encapsulation with for instance, VXLANs, but it's, uh, it's tailored to something called the kernel shared tunnel device, can, which can be VXLAN, GRE, and now Tom is working on GTP or other stuff. Uh, in photo 11 and 12, we facelifted Jamal's code from 20 years ago to uh, an action called pedit. Uh, it's, a, it's a packet uh, editing, which uh, you need in a use cases where you have to rewrite the headers of packet, like in a flow-based router and stuff like that. Um, so that was all uh, till 4.12. Well, in 4.13, uh, Netronome also uh, contributed the, um, uh, their driver to, to align to this uh, framework, and they extended it since then. Uh, in 4.14, uh, Broadcom uh, joined, so now we have three drivers supporting that, and in, uh, I saw patches from Liquid.io. Uh, in the past, we had some patches from i40e. I don't know. Uh, John, you should tell them to continue and push it. So, uh, oh, ah, Anjali, <laughs> you, you guys send me one to the other. I'm talking to Anjali, she's sending it to you. You're talking to you, sending it. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so, so we, we kind of build a community support for that. And, um, and that this is where we are. This is the state of the union for in that small piece of the universe. Uh, what I did want to make a comment now, and I just talked to, to guys from Intel, Broadcom, and Atronome, Mellanox. Uh, I don't see if Dave is here, he's not here, but I can talk to him later. So uh, we, have, uh, we have in the kernel the legacy mode, uh, which was maybe historical mistakes, but it can happen. Uh, we, would, we would like to have a community standpoint which says uh, we don't want to see uh, new features in the, in the legacy mode because it confuses users, it creates duplicate code. So our message uh, that we came into agreement now is that new features should go to the new mode uh, if, if someone has fixes or maintenance patches to the old mode, that's probably fine. So, um. One thing that is confusing when I try to explain these two modes is their names. <laughs> like the legacy mode, now it's legacy, that makes sense, but uh, switch dev mode is not, uh, has, doesn't have an obvious meaning to those who don't already know. <laughs> This is sort of informal name, so if we can make a name competition, if you have a better, I mean, and, and that's, that's not the essence of it, right? So th the essence is that you get representations for the e-switch ports in the form of a net device, and then you can apply a kernel data, st data pass on it. Th that's it. Like, um, so, so. Not super important. Maybe we can talk about it. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yes. So one of the challenges that we are having is uh, most of our devices, they, you know, we can expose the switch dev mode, but we're having problems with the slow path. Like the devices that we have ex uh, today, if you send a packet from the VF and there's no match in the hardware, it goes out both ways. It goes out to the wire and it goes to the representer. And th that's the reason that we push back on the iPod e patches for supporting switch dev. And if we kind of relax that, then it would be really, well, you know, it will work out great because we really would like to add all the TC hooks, hooks for offload on the representer. We would not want to go to the legacy mode, right. right? Because it works out really good for us. But the slow path is what is holding us. So th there is some freedom in how you re how you implement the slow path within your driver. It, it, in, in this private example that you gave, you, you said that you have a, some limitation that when a virtual function sent a packet and there's no pa and there's no match, it goes to the representer, but it also goes to the wire. 
what the kernel data pass needs is the packets to go to the presenter. Uh, if going out to the wire doesn't have a significant side effect, which I don't know, I somehow cause. It does uh, So I, I <laughs> so <laughs> it what it confused the networks. So so what, what do you want me to do? Like <laughs> so 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 no uh, wait. The, the 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 slow pass is 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 the foundation of the story because if you don't have a proper slow pass, the kernel the control plane cannot configure you. So so you could. In your case, what can happen, like, you know, in, um, let's say in OVS, there's the normal rule that causes OVS to apply learning, but if it's an environment which does not use learning, it will work for you, right? Yes. So, yeah, so that's exactly the point, right? So anybody who's not really running OVS as orchestration on top and doing for learning, for example, I mean, if the right? If it's a fully controlled environment that does not apply learning and does not need the slow pass, it can work, but uh, it's not going to work well for the video. Okay. Well, if it's if it's an environment where slow pass is not used at all, it can work. But it's hard to me to imagine such an environment because you always have something that goes on slow pass. You have some always some control plane that wants to to do something. Right, but then there is also the idea where, uh, you know, the hypervisor is missing out on the VF state itself, like, you know, the stats or the link status, or actually programming all the rules on the VF, where I will have to use the legacy method to say, oh, VF, I did this on IP route tool, you know, to program a rule. So I would really prefer, I, if there was a way to say, I have representers uh, on a switch dev, but I don't really support the slow path. Because so, that so let's helps take it, a lot let's of take it offline. If, if yeah. you, let's, okay, so let's continue. Um, um, okay, so um, let's start to, to think about. Uh, so so uh, uh, again, the people that most of the many people that here know the, the details, but and again, I don't have to introduce them. But the, the, the approach was to uh, expose a representative NEP device for each uh, e switch port, and then the programming of the data pass, the, the fast pass. Uh, we chose to go through TC Flower, which there's also introduction uh, later by Simon, uh, but it's, it's flow-based, okay? Uh, what's in the switch world called ACLs, or in the NIC world that we call it flows, uh, we are using um, TC Flower. So, so uh, um, how about environment, um, environment that are no flow, n n not flow-based, okay? Uh, more conventional environment like uh, L2, uh, L2 or L3 based. So, um, again, if the control plane is flow-based, but like they, they, they implement layer two network, networking or, la or simple la layer three networking by programming flows. So we are back to the, same, to the same game and it's sort of easy. If you use stuff like OVS or ODL or, or DVR, which is distributed virtual router. So um, again, if you're doing layer two, so uh, the control plane itself, they're, they're implementing some model of a bridge, but they would program a flow that does matching on, on layer two and then uh, deals with VLANing and, and forward. So we can support it. If it's a simple, relatively simply L3 case, so this control plane, again, would program some matching on Mac and VLAN, it would apply header rewrite, right? Because it's a router that has to change Mac. And then, again, we're back to the same uh, 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 story. So, so that's, that's, um, that's an easier... Uh, um, an easier example, but let's let's try to take it further. Okay, um, typically uh, NIC hardware they don't have the same built-in block as a switch ASIC, right? It's a it's a different different architecture. I don't know. Sometimes I don't understand why. Uh, um, I was I remember John. I was talking to you, and you we said, "Hey, it's Dutch hardware. Why it has to be so different?" But but still, let, let's try to think how we can apply layer two. Uh, layer two, layer three, offloading on, on NICs uh, or with um, of Linux data pass on the NIC that support this this stuff. So um, to begin with, let's let's adjust the hardware driver to register on events. So today we have the switch dev driver. It's um, it's an a switch ASIC driver that Mellanox did it, but other vendors could do that as well. So so the way that this driver works with the stack, they they register to notifications from the stack and they respond of them. And they, there are notifications typically from the stack to the driver, but sometimes also the other way up, from the driver to the stack. So if we get those notifications and we do some adjustment in the driver or in the firmware to translate from the kernel uh, L2 and L3 thinking to, to the driver, to the hardware API, we can try uh, an attempt to offload the L2 or L3. 
Um, let, let's take it to L2 because it's simpler. So how would, you, how would it would look like? We would create a Linux bridge and we would assign those representers to the bridge and we should support uh, the notification in the hardware driver. So uh, for instance, uh, in the Mellanox NIC, our hardware don't, uh, doesn't learn FDB entries, whereas in the ASIC driver, they do know how to learn it. So this, there is already infrastructure for that, that if the bridge, today it's used only for static FDBs, but, but it, it will just happen, or maybe we have to only a little bit tweak the bridge code, that when they learn an FDB, they, would, they send this notification, you see add to device, and then uh, in the hardware driver, we will get those notification, and we can translate it to a flow and program it, right? Uh, so, so here I, I attempted to, to kind of, uh, I, I, I was uh, sitting with someone from our team, with Ido from our team, and we kind of broke it to what, what disciplines you have to do in order to offload L2. You have to deal with learning, with aging, with STP, with floating, and it's, it seems doable. So b because you have slow pass, and because they can, uh, in, in slow pass what happens, you have a miss, is we go to the bridge, they would learn the FDB, right? So, so the, the, the L2, uh, of course, there are many details to complete here, but this is a, um, a simpler exercise. When we went to uh, layer three, uh, it became uh, more, more complex. You have to build the environment again with a bridge. You have to assign IP addresses. This is more, uh, and here you have to respond to FIB events. So um, in a very simple routing scheme, router does the LPM matching and then the neighbor stuff. So you could also, uh, here, here is some example how to do that on a, on a, NIC, NIC, on a flow based NIC uh, hardware API. But this is more, uh, how would I say, Th this becomes more, uh, less natural and annoying. And our, uh, what we have to do, I think, is to, to go back home and talk to our hardware architects or, or the people that expose those uh, hardware API and to see if, if NIC hardware can support APIs which are more uh, suitable to, to, that, uh, to that stuff. Um, it, it's doable, but it's, starts to be a bit ugly and uh, I don't know. What, because of the LPM? LPM and yes, yes, it's, uh, it's too... You can implement LPM. Yes, it's written here, I do it. <laughs> it's written on the slide. Uh, but yes, yes. But Ronnie, I think that maybe today our hardware can do more than what the APIs uh, exposes. Right. So be because the people that design those APIs, uh, the architects of Nix, they, they, they kind of less live this world. Be, be, be clear that you're talking about the hardware APIs and not the operating system. Yes, 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 okay, again, again, yes, 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 uh, uh, yes, maybe in your, yes, a again, th those, uh, um, excuse me, those two slides, uh, they attempt to say, okay, let's say I have a kernel model that uses uh, L3 or L2, and then we use all the notifications, and now we want to implement it over a NIC hardware driver, so what do we need to do? We have to, we have to uh, respond to those notifications and program the hardware. So when I say that the, the, the NIC is less suitable for the kernel, for the kernel, the kernel doesn't know that it's a switch or a NIC, right? They see, they see a bridge or they see a routing scheme and they just send the notifications, okay? So, so maybe in your case, your hardware or your... I, I just want to be clear for everyone in the audience that, that what you're saying is that your hardware APIs are deficient and it will be improved and that the OS to driver APIs support. Yes, yes. I, 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 th there could be some points where you have to do small adjustment in the OS API because uh, um, maybe even Jiri can tell us now. Um, for instance, in the in the in the bridge case, in the bridge case, uh, th th those notifications uh, would would they just work s uh, transparently when if my if my hardware doesn't learn it goes to the CPU, it will the bridge will learn it and send this notification. No, it, so today it only sent on static FDBs, right? Yeah. Right, so this is an example for a small, small adjustment, but it's doable. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it, it doesn't break the architecture, it, it's, it's nice. Even so yeah. What's your point? point? It's, I'm sorry, we should probably use mics for this. The, the point... Yeah, uh, yeah. Sorry. Being the mic Nazi myself, uh, you, you should use the mic, okay? Because, you know, it's going to, uh, Unless you don't want your parents to see you on YouTube. Uh, my only point is that uh, these are all mostly, when I look at this list, the list is the deficiency in the hardware to driver API, not knowing how your hardware architecture works. Maybe it's also deficiencies in the hardware. I have no comment on that. And I think the changes from the OS to the driver are fairly minimal for L2 and L3 because we've done most of the work already. 
Sans maybe this one small patch to get the L2 working, which I think is a relatively small patch at this point. And I think L3 should, by and large, work out of the box if you implement the APIs. Okay. So, so I think you, what you're saying is if the hardware doesn't know how to learn, it's deficient? Uh, is that what you meant? No, 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 no. I'm, sa <laughs> I'm saying if, you're, um, if your hardware can't implement LPM, that is a requirement for doing layer 3 routing from the OS's perspective. And if you're not doing layer three routes with LPMs, you're not doing layer three routing in the sense that the kernel does routing, so you have to do something else. My yes, point then is saying that all, the, all of the APIs, I think, are working and ready to go, except for, uh, as you pointed out, the L2 thing, which I, I, I've looked at that code before to implement it, and I think it's a fairly small patch and could be done in a, like weeks or a month. John, I agree with you 100%. What I'm trying that in the L3 case, because this is, a, the was a very simple case. There, there's no ESC, ECMP, and there's no VRF. I, I, the kernel I, model is very sophisticated. So if you would always use, I, if you're in my driver, okay, it's my driver, not driver. If in my driver, I can only use a very, very limited APIs, my driver will, will be, start I, to be bigger and bigger. And I'm not, not arguing correct. with you. I, I just wanted to be clear for everyone in the audience yes. that didn't, they didn't walk away with the impression that the Linux OS didn't support all of this already, which, oh, which was my sort of impression from reading <laughs> no, the slide. No, no. Okay. So, 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 uh, I, I don't want to disrupt your meeting, but so your angle of how you do this is you use PEdit to pretend you're doing LPM or? No, 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 oh. okay, that, so Jamal, you, you, you didn't listen. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, 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 again, the, the PEdit stuff, okay, that's, that's confusing. If your control plane by itself, Jamal, is, is flow-based, okay, so they, 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 they like do all the routing in their minds and, and in the end of the day they configure a flow. Okay, so the only need they need to you, uh, the only thing, so they would do the, the LPM, they would do the neighbor, they, they would do everything. They, in the end of the day, they, they would just give you a flow that you do matching and you have to forward it. But as part of the forwarding, they would tell you, hey, rewrite the max and the TTL, that's it. So this, this would apply for control, control plane, excuse me, like uh, DVR, distributed virtual router, which is flow based, okay? That's one thing that, that's, that can be supported today, okay? I think we have patches for the right, you have it too, right? So, so that's supported. So, but if you're... Um, it's supported through this, it's not supported yes, through... I, I, I yes, I but if, if, you're, if, if you're trying to take a Linux router, they're not using flows, right? They're using fibs. But and now you want to offload that. The result is the same. You take from the and you pull it back. No, but the model is different. <laughs> because they, they, would, they would be the LPM tree. Right, no. oh, you got it? Okay, good. Okay. Um, so, excuse me. Uh, okay, I'll hand it now to Simon. Uh, yeah, so as Orr mentioned earlier, we have these uh, things called representatives, which is part of the, S the switch to uh, SROV model. Uh, so what a representer is, is uh, as its name implies, it represents some kind of uh, port, uh, if, if you think of a, a switch kind of model. Um, so for each VF, for example, and the VFs might themselves might be handed off to VMs, you're left with a representer down in the host that you can use to get fallback traffic. You can use to configure aspects of uh, the port, like the link state and so on, and uh, also to collect statistics, uh, how many f packets in and out and so on. Um, so in the beginning, there was only one type of, um, of port you could have, uh, which is just the physical ports. Um, and then uh, we can get virtual ports, and now we can get representers. And actually, we can get representers for the different types of ports. So mo uh, most of the drivers have representers only for virtual ports. But in the Netronome case, we also have them for physical ports and uh, a few other things too. Uh, so what this proposal is, I won't read through it, uh, but is the idea to standardize on the string that's exported to user space through SF uh, SysFS uh, to allow uh, orchestration to differentiate between different types of representers. So we can, we can basically know that this representer is associated with physical port number one, whatever physical port number one means, whereas this other representer is associated with virtual port number six, whatever that means. Um, and th th this scheme uh, covers uh, not all conceivable uh, combinations, but all, all that are, are likely to be used in practice in the foreseeable future. Um, so actually this was uh, proposed by my colleague Jakob. I just copy pasted his email into the slide. Um, so we, we should definitely align your out. <laughs> we, we will, yes, I know your frustration. So, uh, so uh, 
and a secondary part of this proposal, which is from, from Yuri over here, is uh, right now these strings are just generated by the drivers themselves. So typically they'll just put the number of the VF or something in there. Uh, but it, it, it's up to the drivers to conform to whatever standard there is, and there isn't so much of a standard. Uh, and Yuri's idea is that, that uh, some higher label, layer, maybe DevLink or whatever, could uh, generate these. Uh, so that it would basically, it would be up to a higher layer to generate the string based on information provided by the driver, rather than the driver generating the string. Y you mean those strings or? Yeah, those strings. I, I think if we can get to alignment and agree and we can patch our driver, uh, Andy, like you can, I know that you're also. So devices today are named by system D, right? Sort of, kind of. I mean, I, so I guess that was one of the things I wanted to just say with this. Is yeah, so I forgot to mention. One of the motivations for this is to allow system D or whatever to give consistent names to your net devs. Thus the title of the slide. Yeah. <laughs> I just didn't see everybody's favorite system D listed up there. Okay, there, so. So, so, um, uh, so yeah, so I guess uh, I think this sounds pretty good. And obviously I think, um, I mean, several people know, like in the SmartNIC use case that I've talked about, there is the idea of some more representers for maybe some devices that aren't directly connected to your, to, to your, uh, yeah, your, your namespace. But anyway, um, I think like something like this would work well. I mean, do we think that we can work together with System D to help get these named correctly? I mean, if we provide them the right input, or do we really want to allow this? I mean, it seems like we ought to let System D do the naming, as yes. much as I hate to say that. So absolutely, the naming should be left to user space, and, and uh, yeah, the the implication of this is that we can uh, work with System D or UDev or whatever to to get it updated. Good. So we all will align also. Uh, just yeah. You talk about this, the naming, the name of the, the device. So what we're talking about here, to be clear, is is providing a, a hint to user space using CSFS, which already exists, but just standardizing on on the format of the contents of that hint so that user space can do whatever it wants with it. So, but you're talking about the name of the, of the net device or talking so the about so the inner name uh, from the switch dev? So the, the, the user space could use it to net rename the net devices mm -hmm. or it could not. So uh, we can share the slides with you later. <laughs> <laughs> Con yes, that, that's it. something that Jacob sent on the list, and we can. It, it's on the mailing list. Maybe, maybe we should have. Uh, Andy, wait, maybe we can use some break and, and see that we're aligned. The, uh, the keyword you want is uh, Fizzport name and Moose. <laughs> 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 you were part of the thread. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so moving on, uh, so I, I, this slide is just, a, right now in the kernel we have uh, two different models being used for, um, for, for, for SRV representation of, uh, of s it's not really CPU port, but the f relationship between physical links, links in the net devs. Uh, so there's the, the model which was first done by Mellanox and which everyone except Netronome has followed. Um, and so that's model number one. Um, and in this model, you get a PF for every physical port, just as you would for basically every other NIC you've ever seen. Um, uh, I, I use the word represents here. This is incorrect. It is basically is the physical port. Um, so there you are. So we, we are going to change it and to align to... Uh, so this stems from power virtualization environment where the physical port is represented by the DPF, but it doesn't apply well to, to this model and to some uh, generalization and extension of it for uh, SmartNIC and for other stuff. Yeah. So we would, we would actually introduce a representative for the uplink for the physical port. Right, right. And a representative for the PF. Yes, regarding the representative for the PF, we, we can, we can do that. that but yeah, um, so so I, I yes, that's also doable. I mean, that's not. I think that's that's the more general model, and I I, yeah. I I don't see a problem with doing that. Yeah. So in the in the model two, which is so far only implemented for NFP, um, w the reason we chose this is because it better matches the physical hardware we have, uh, because I in the case of our hardware, there is not really a coupling between the PF and the physical ports. Um, so it didn't really make sense to expose that to the host. We, we could have, 
and kind of lied, but we decided not to. So instead, we have this kind of new uh, thing, which is that we have a net div for the PF itself. And this is just a connection between the host and the card. Uh, and we can use it for various things, but that's it. It's not associated with any type of port, physical. So what is, the use, th what is the use for the PAF net dev? What is used for? So in practice, what we use it for yeah. is um, we use it to, to uh, carry all the... So we have it as a lower device, and we put all our representers as upper devices on top of it. So this is a net, net device that can send traffic and receive traffic? Yes, but the traffic only goes between the host and the card. So I believe the idea is going towards more of a true switch-like model, right? Because that's where you would want a default uh, interface per uh, you know, port on the switch. And PF becomes then a port on the switch and then you want a default interface which is your PF representer. Yes. And I yeah. think it works better going forward for a lot of things where there is a decoupling between the PF interface and the external port. And That's I right. think yeah, so uh, somebody from Mellanox is talking about the multi-home stuff and it becomes very handy there. Right, right. Yeah. So we, we can go into that a little bit. I don't know how much time we have. But the other half, as you mentioned, is we have, uh, we have no more time. We have representatives for the physical ports. Okay, and so what, what we also have, which is not written here, because I thought it would be confusing, but uh, we also have a representer for the PF, and this representer could be shared to secondary hosts, and so they can control or get information about the PF without owning the PF. The, the reason we didn't do this in the beginning is when you're using a, bit, um, a power virtualized environment, you're picking the NIC, that's your, the only NIC you have, mm -hmm. to the switch. And if you want to have an IP address or something to the, to the local host, you do another port to the switch. You don't have another out-of-band NAND device. So it, I'm trying to figure out if this NAND device is connected to the switch. No. It's like a, like a virtual function, like, like a virtual function number minus one. That, that's what it's exactly. managed or it's not managed? I, I, I should, maybe he can answer. <laughs> Sorry, you guys want what? So, so yeah, this is my colleague Jakob. He he actually designed the thing that I'm talking so about. Yeah, it's a, another VF effectively. So it's a VF minus one or whatever, and it works exactly the same way. Fallback goes to the representer and everything. Yep. No, sure. But I think. I think the problem that will confuse people, that, that's the reason we didn't do it in the beginning, because when like you running open, open stack or open vSwitch, yes. so you, you currently use the old physical function and connect it to the bridge. <coughs> so that's what people do today. Yes, yes. So now you can use them and have yes, another link. And it, the question is, is the original link or not? I understand that we need to have another link for the local host and probably we'll have more links, like when you're talking about containers, so there yes. probably will be I, 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 many I agree, others. I agree about this confusion point, and I think we would have di we discussed that, I seem to recall, but it comes back to we want to represent the hardware in the OS rather than misrepresent it by saying that each physical port is a, a PF, which in the case of our hardware I is not true. So that, that w how, how do we use the existing software model to match the new hardware? That's, that was the question we were trying to solve. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, I think the question is, is the pop, if the uplink is the physical function or, and I think you need just to flip them. So the uplink continue to be the external, po the, the path, sorry, is the uplink representer. And you can have, like you have virtual function, you can have in other ports. That's what we have. That's right here. That's exactly what we're doing. Uh, sorry, we're not, so no, the uplink representer is the MAC representer. It's just a different word for the yeah. same thing. Link between the no. This is the link between. Yes, what he calls here MAC representer, it's the uplink. It's the uplink. Yeah. yeah, it's the same. Yeah. It's the uplink. It's the uplink. Yeah, sorry. Okay, I so the physical function is not the uplink. No. No, no, no. no. So you, okay, so you adding another 
another port just is not connected to the uplink. So, 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 it's so no okay. matter how many... Well, let's take it. So no matter how many... F you always get exactly one of these. You can continue this yes. in, in the okay. bar tonight. Yes, yes. Let's continue this later. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I think we're, okay. we're good. Thanks. Okay. okay. Uh, thank, you. thank you, guys. Thank you. Right. I'm going to give this gift to you. It's for you. Because he has a nice talk.